What is up, everyone? Nobaham here. In this episode of Redstone Fundamentals, we are going to be talking about two uh, really important and very uh, useful and powerful items. One is the repeater. The other is the comparator. We're going to spend most of our time talking about the comparator because I think that is one that is uh, quite misunderstood or just not, you know, most people don't actually know what the crap it's supposed to be used for. So we are going to dive into that. But first, we are going to talk about the redstone repeater. So let's just get right into that. All right, to craft a repeater, all you need is three stone blocks, two redstone torches, and a redstone dust in the center. Repeaters can be broken instantly if you punch them with either no tools or any tool. They will also break if you try to move them with a piston, and they will also break if you try to move the block they are sitting on with a piston. They will also break if they come in contact with running water as well as uh, flowing lava. However, if they come in contact with flowing lava, they will not drop themselves as when they do, they instantly will burn up the item that they drop because, you know, lava. So the purpose of a redstone repeater is to repeat the redstone signal. So here we have a little small demonstration of what I'm talking about where we have a redstone signal that is much too long to light this lamp. Uh, redstone normally only goes 15 blocks. So you'll notice that it's at full power, it's at 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, all the way down until you can see where it ends right here. So as you can see, this redstone signal cannot reach the lamp at all. However, if we are to place a repeater here, it will boost the signal again, allowing it to reach the lamp. So it doesn't actually matter what signal strength the repeater receives in the back of the repeater. It will still give out a full signal strength out the back. So right now we have a signal strength of one feeding into the repeater, but it is dishing out a uh, redstone signal of 15. These are directional. So as you can see, you do have to place them. Uh, this is the back of the repeater. This is the front. You do have to place them in that direction. You cannot place them facing the redstone. You cannot place them sideways to the redstone. It will not carry on the redstone uh, in any direction, including if it brings it in the side, it won't output it out the front. The only input to the repeater is from the back. So if we are to place the repeater down again in the right orientation, it will carry on that signal. One of the other uses of redstone repeaters is to delay the signal. Now redstone repeaters on their default state have a one redstone tick, so half a game tick. You may notice as we play with this here, you may notice that there is or can be a very small delay just by adding that repeater uh, into the line of redstone. Now a repeater can also increase the delay if you right click on the repeater and you see that this rear torch will move along the, the little notch that it's sitting in here. Every time you right click it, it moves back one, which adds one redstone tick delay to a maximum of four redstone tick delay. And we'll see what that looks like now. If we take a look, it is quite a noticeable delay now that uh, it is at its full uh, setting. The benefit to that, we use this a lot in things like double piston extenders where you don't want all the pistons to extend at the same time. So you want some of them delayed longer than others. And so this is when you would use a redstone uh, uh, delayed redstone repeater. The other one is in a clock. If you have something that you need to happen on a rotating basis, but only, you don't want it to um, uh, dispense an item, for example, but you don't want it to, to do that too frequently, then you would put a delay on it. And one thing you can do with repeaters is you can actually stack them like this. So now we have four repeaters. So we'll put them all at max delay. And you will notice that the delay is much longer now compared to with only one repeater, that it has that four tick delay in each repeater before moving on to the next one. So it is quite a delay, which works really well in clocks if you want something to happen only every so often. Uh, I know with my Blaze farm that I used to build, uh, I used a lot of these because it would delay the redstone long enough that the uh, Blaze would be suffocated. And then by the time the clock ran out or by the time the final piston, dished out its power, then the pistons would retract and the blaze would be left with like half a heart left or something like that. So there's many uses to delaying redstone. Uh, but this is one of the other main purposes of a repeater is not just to boost or repeat the signal, but also to delay the signal. As we've mentioned before in other episodes, there are two forms of powered blocks in Minecraft, soft powered and hard powered. 
This block here will be soft powered and you can tell because yes, this redstone dust is powering this block and you can tell because this torch is off so it is receiving power. However, this is a soft powered block because you can because it's not giving power to this redstone dust. So you can that's the big difference between soft powered and hard powered. Now the nice thing about a repeater is you can actually pull the redstone signal out of a soft powered block to power the redstone dust here. All you do is replace this dust with a repeater and it actually is able to pull that signal out of the soft powered block to send the signal down the rest of the redstone. A repeater has the ability not only to pull the power out of a soft powered block, but it actually, if you face a repeater into a block, it will hard power that block. So if we place dust here, this dust will be powered because this block is now hard powered because the repeater is powering the block instead of the redstone dust that was there. All right, moving on to the comparator. Probably the most misunderstood item in all of Minecraft. So to craft a comparator, all you need is three stone blocks, three redstone torches, and one quartz right in the center. Comparators can be broken the exact same way that a repeater can, by either punching it with a tool or your fist, by coming in contact with running water or lava, or being pushed by a piston, or the block it's, that it's sitting on being pushed by a piston. So what exactly does a comparator do? I do want to cover one thing that it can do, which is not really its intended purpose, but I do want to bring it up because I think it can mislead a lot of you if you uh, get a certain result from what you're trying to do, which like I said, it can be misleading. So we have a situation here where we have a, I think this is like 19 or something, uh, redstone dust. And if we are to remove this and place our uh, dust there, we will see that we cannot light this lamp. Uh, it looks like we have 17, I think. Uh, anyways, so what we can do with a comparator is you can use it to, like a repeater, to boost or repeat the signal in order to, to lengthen the redstone signal in order to light the lamp. However, the big, big difference between the repeater and the comparator is the repeater repeats the signal in the sense that what it outputs is the maximum redstone signal, which is 15, no matter what it receives in the back. So in this case, it's receiving a redstone signal of one, and then it repeats out a redstone signal of 15 out the front. A comparator takes whatever it's receiving in the back end. So the, in this case, it has a power of seven and it gives out the same power. So we are it's giving out power seven again. So instead, in this case of it being able to repeat the signal another 15 blocks, it simply extends this redstone signal by three blocks. So in this case, the, it goes 15 all the way there, all the way down to seven, and then this is power seven, this is power seven, and then six, five, four, three, two, one. So if we were actually to remove this and place redstone dust, there is no redstone signal because this is only redstone signal one. So that's one big thing to make sure you understand about the comparator. It's not the same as a repeater, even though it can, depending on the length of your redstone uh, dust, it can give you the result similar to a repeater, but that's the big, big, big difference is this will, whatever it receives from its uh, input in the back is what it will output the same redstone signal. The redstone comparator has four different functions. One is it can maintain signal strength, which is what it's doing here. It's bringing it, taking in seven, it's giving out seven, so it's maintaining the signal strength. Another one is it can compare two different signals. The third one is it can uh, subtract two different redstone inputs. And the fourth function is it can read certain block states. So first we will talk about the comparative state, which is where it gets its name from. So in this case, right here, we have a redstone comparator in its normal uh, default condition, which is where the front uh, redstone torch is down and off. And what this does is it compares the input from the rear and the input from the sides. And essentially it says that if the input from the back is greater than the input from the side, then it will output the signal. If the input from the side is greater than the input from the back, it will not output any signal. And I will demonstrate that now. So right now <clears throat> we have a signal strength of eight coming in from the back and we have a signal strength of seven coming in from the side. So essentially this comparator is saying, yes, the, the input coming in from the back is greater than the input from the side. So yes, I will output 
the same power, so it's receiving eight, it will output starting at eight, power all the way down, because the back is bigger than or greater than the side. However, if we were to increase the side, so now this is at 14 and the rear is at eight, <clears throat> the comparator says, oh, the side has greater uh, signal strength now, I will not output any signal out the front. Now, the difference between comparative mode and subtract mode is subtract mode, in order to activate subtract mode, you just right click on the comparator so that the front torch is up and on. So now you'll notice that whenever I do click on this, it actually changes the output strength, as you can see. So this is in comparative mode, this is in subtract mode. So what subtract mode does is it takes the input from the back, from I guess this would be the primary input, and then it has two inputs on either side. So it'll take the primary input, and then it will subtract from the primary input the input coming in from the side. So like we said earlier, this is power eight, this is power seven, the comparator says eight minus seven is one, and it outputs a power of one. If this side is greater, so again, if we put the tor if we put the lever here, now because it's still, it doesn't take the greatest number and subtract it from the lower number, it takes the rear, the main input, and subtracts from that, the side input. So in this case, we have power level eight, and we're trying to subtract 14 from eight, which obviously is less than zero. And so because it's less than zero, it will output absolutely nothing. So that is one thing to, to make sure you understand how it does the subtract mode is the primary input is the rear input. If the rear input is greater than the side input, then it will uh, the output will be the difference between the two. So if we just change that back there, if we change this one to here. Now you'll see that we get a lot more because this is now 13 minus seven. So we should have a power of six, six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, do I have that wrong? 15, 14. Oh, this is 14 minus seven. So we should have seven, not 13. So yeah, seven, uh, 14 minus seven is seven. So seven, six, five, four, three, two, one one and then we have no power. So that is how subtract mode differs from comparative mode is that comparative mode is kind of like binary where if the condition is met then it's either on or off. Subtract mode will actually, uh, the output will depend on the math between subtracting the side uh, input from the rear input. One thing to note also is uh, maybe I don't understand this part as much but apparently adding the uh, an input from the side doesn't oh it totally does now all right one thing i wanted to cover in subtract mode is it, the possibility of using all three inputs and what the output would would be so in this case what i've discovered is that we have three inputs we have the uh, input a which is the main input at uh, signal 14 we have input b at signal 12 and we have input c at signal 7. so what is the output? In this case, the output is two. So the way that the comparator works in subtract mode is it takes into consideration the inputs B and C and just figures out which one is greater. And in this case, B is greater because it is at level 12. Then what it does is it takes 12 and subtracts it from the, the A input, which is 14. So we get take 14 minus 12 and it gives us the output of two. It essentially compares the two inputs from the side, finds out which one's bigger, and then does the math off of that and ignores the other input. I can't, I've been doing a bunch of tests and I can't figure out any way to have it consider all three of these inputs. So if any of you have any ideas of when you would actually use all three inputs, please let me know down in the comments and let me know what you've done uh, and why you use all three inputs. Uh, from what I can tell, it would really only benefit if you have two inputs and it would just do the math subtracting between those two. Unless you have something pretty crazy where depending on what is happening in your world or whatever, it could be that this one is greater or it could be that this one is greater. Uh, and then, of course, depending on that, the output is different or whatever. But yeah, let me know if you guys are using all three inputs at the same time. But this is what I've discovered with subtract mode is it will compare the two side inputs, figures out which one's greater, and then just subtracts that from the A input and then outputs the difference. All right. And for the last thing that I wanted to share about comparators is how they can read the state of a block like a chest or a cake. 
Uh, so for example, in this case, we're going to look at a chest. So right now the chest is completely empty and it is sending out zero redstone signal. So the comparator has zero signal coming out. However, if we were to place a stack of items into the chest, we now have a redstone signal of one, which we can then grab with this repeater and take off and go somewhere else. If we want to go uh, turn a light on or whatever it is that we want to do when we have one stack of items, if we add a second stack of items, we get a second redstone signal and so on and so forth if we continue to add stacks of items we will continue to add one redstone signal up to of course a max of 15. now this is one way that we can uh, have certain things activate or deactivate when we have a certain number of items in the chest or if we were to have for example a hopper minecart that would come underneath and collect items out of the chest then we can always uh, either activate or deactivate depending on if it's a full chest or it becomes an empty chest so on and so forth so one thing i do want to point out though is often if you have redstone right next to each other it's really hard to grab the redstone and take it out this way to something and take it out from here because they're right beside each other and they often connect but the easiest way to do that would be to simply uh, take a repeater and, and just change which side of the redstone dust uh, you are on. And this will allow you to, if there's one redstone signal, you can take redstone off this way. If there's two, you can take it off this way, so on and so forth. But that's just a really nice way to measure how much of, uh, of a chest is full or how much of a piece of cake has been eaten or so on and so forth. So that's another thing a comparator does. Which I use this quite a bit. Uh, I use it a lot with hoppers. Uh, in a lot of sorting systems, you use comparators and they look at the hopper and if they have a certain number of items in the hopper, then they will give out a certain redstone signal, which can either lock or unlock the hopper, allowing more items to actually flow through the hopper instead of stopping them. So that's one place where you'll see this situation very commonly used. All right, everyone, that is it for the episode today. I hope you learned something new about repeaters and comparators today. I hope I didn't bore you to death or overcomplicate this at all. And anything that I missed, if you guys uh, know that there's something that I skipped or I, I talked about or that I was wrong, uh, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, as we all know, you know, is not all knowing. So if there's anything you guys can teach me again, please leave in the comments. If you still have questions or if you still feel conf confused, let me know down in the comments as well. If you like the video, feel free to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and click that little bell icon so you can be notified when I post more videos just like this one. All right, everyone, have a great rest of your day uh, and I will see you in the next episode.